Today I want to present an evaluation of a fairly well-known infinite sum, but the way that we're going to evaluate it, I think I've, well, I've never seen before for this sum. Okay, so in particular, we want to find the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of the arctan of 1 over 2n squared. And here we're going to use complex numbers, in particular, the polar form of a complex number. So let's notice that if we take z equal to a plus bi, so that's the rectangular form where a and b are real numbers, then we can rewrite it as, well, the length of z or the modulus of z times e to the i theta, where that modulus of z is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's like the distance that z is from the origin. And then theta is called the argument. And maybe if we take the principal value of the argument, that would be the arctan of b over a. And you can see that just by using some standard trigonometry. And then, well, down here is a picture of the whole situation. But what I'd like to do here is perhaps focus on this formula and maybe observe the following. So notice that we have e to the i theta is equal to z over the modulus of z in this case. But then taking a logarithm of both sides, we're not going into the details of the complex logarithm, but um, I think I made a previous video on that if you'd like to check it out. We'll have e to the i theta, or sorry, just i theta, is equal to the log of z over modulus z. Okay, but then from that we can see that theta is equal to 1 over i times this log of z over the modulus of z. But then um, maybe like in parallel, we know that theta is also equal to this arctan of b over a. So let's write it like that. So here we have b over a, and then we're taking the arctan of that. Okay, so now well, what we want to do is somehow apply this to our problem. So notice that we've got the arctan of 1 over 2 times n squared. Okay, well, well, what complex number has that situation? Well, notice that this is of the form b over a if z is equal to 2n squared plus i. I think that's pretty clear. But then that's going to be equal to the argument or this theta value. But now that's going to be 1 over i times the log of, well, we can write this as 2n squared plus i over well, now we've got to find the modulus of z. So we can do that fairly easily. And what you'll see is you get the square root of 4n squared plus 1. Okay, good. But now what we can do is simplify what's going on there a little bit. And that's simply by like factoring and then canceling, and we'll have this, this is 1 over i, and then the log of, so this ends up being uh, 2n squared plus i over 2n squared minus i, all inside of a square root. So what would we do? Well, we take that numerator and write it as perhaps 2n squared plus 1 all squared, and then take the square root of that. And then we take that denominator and we could factor it as 2n squared plus i and 2n squared minus i. That should be to the fourth power. Okay, good. But now we can use logarithm rules to take that square root, think about it as a half power, and bring it out. So that's going to turn this into 1 over 2 times i. And then we have the log of... Let's see, 2n squared plus i over 2n squared minus i. So we've got something like that. Okay, so now what we'll do is perhaps observe that, well, our arctan of 1 over 2n squared is exactly that. So that means we can rewrite our sum using this 
formula over here that we have on the right hand side and see if that helps us out any. But actually before we do that I'd like to do one more step and that is to multiply the numerator and the denominator inside this logarithm by a half and that's going to give us n squared plus i over 2 over n squared minus i over 2. You'll see why that will be helpful in just a second. But anyway, let's transpose this up here and then we'll see where we can go from there. All right, so this is where we are so far. We took our sum and we wrote it as 1 over 2 times i times the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, the log of n squared plus i over 2 over n squared minus i over 2. And now I'd like to, well, exhibit a factorization formula for the numerator as well as the denominator inside that logarithm. But in fact, we're just going to calculate it for the denominator. I'll let you guys figure out the numerator, but we will write it down. Okay, so let's take this n squared minus i over 2 and rewrite it as n squared minus 1 over the square root of 2 squared times, now we can rewrite i as e to the i pi over 2. Notice that e to the i pi over 2, well that's going to have an argument of pi over 2 which puts us along the imaginary axis and it's one unit along the imaginary axis. But now this is of the form n squared minus something squared. We can think about e to the i pi over 2 as e to the i pi over 4 squared. So this can factor as a difference of squares. This factors as n squared minus 1 over root 2 times e to the i pi over 4. Sorry, that should be n minus that. And then n plus that. So n plus 1 over root 2 e to the i pi over 4. Okay, good. And then, well, let's maybe recall what e to the i pi over 4 is. That's just simply going to be 1 over root 2 plus i over root 2, given the fact that we're at a 45 degree angle there. So that means this turns into n minus, so it's going to be 1 half minus i over 2, and then n plus 1 half plus i over 2. And we get that just from multiplying the square root of 2 through. Okay, so I think that's a pretty nice factorization, and we're going to use that um, and something similar to that in the numerator. But uh, as we do that, I want to bring this logarithm out and turn the sum into a product. So here we have 1 over 2 times i, and then the log of the product as n goes from 1 up to infinity of, let's see, our denominator was taken care of. We have n minus a half and then minus i over 2, and then n plus a half plus i over 2. And then let's see, in the numerator, like promised, we're going to have n minus a half plus i over 2, and n plus a half minus i over 2. That's from that similar factorization, if you will. Okay, and now, well, I think maybe the really careful way to do this would be to write it as a limit of a partial product and then maybe get a closed form for that and do a bit of simplification. But let's maybe do a little fast and loose method. And what we'll do is rewrite this using just a bunch of terms and then see some cancellation. So let's see what the n equals one term is. So notice we're going to have a half plus i over 2. So that's going to be from plugging 1 in here. And then we're going to have 3 halves minus i over 2. That's from plugging 1 in to this second term in the numerator. And then here we're going to have a half minus i over 2. And then 3 halves plus i over 2. Okay. So let's just be sure to notice that all of this right here is the n equals 1 term. And then let's maybe work up to the n equals 3 term so we've got a feel for what's going on. So the n equals 2 term will be 3 halves plus i over 2, and then 5 halves minus i over 2. And then let's see, in the denominator we're going to have 3 halves minus i over 2, and then 5 halves plus i over 2. And now I think you could probably see what's really happening here, but let's work out the details. So this is the n equals 2 term. 
And then, like I said, we're gonna work up to the n equals three term and then maybe just observe the pattern. Okay, so here we're gonna have a five halves plus i over two, and then a seven halves minus i over two. And then in the denominator, we're gonna have a five halves minus i over two, and then a seven halves plus an i over two. And then I'll just put dot, dot, dot here. And like I said before, the careful way to do this would be to do it with the limit of a partial product. We'd see there's an ending point there, but maybe I'll let you fill in those details if you need to. Okay, so now let's observe that we get a good bit of cancellation here. So let's see, what's our first cancellation? We have this three halves minus i over two cancels with its companion down here. And then we have this three halves plus i over two cancels with its companion up here. And then let's see, we've got this five halves minus canceling this five halves minus, and then this uh, five halves plus canceling this five halves plus. And then likewise, this seven halves minus will cancel its companion, and this seven halves plus will cancel its companion. And everything cancels from there on out. And well, I'd like to point out here that well, of course, if we were doing the limit of a partial sum, we would end up with something at the end whose limit is one. That's an important point here. Okay, so now let's see what we're left over with. Just the quotient of these two terms at the starting point. So we have all of this is one over two times i, and then we have the log of, now I'm gonna write that as one plus i over one minus i. And well, I can simply do that because, well, notice that I can multiply the numerator and the denominator by two. And now let's maybe simplify this thing by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by one plus i to see what happens. So let's see, in the numerator, what are we gonna have? So let's see, we're gonna have one times one, which is one, i times i, which is negative one, so that cancels. And then the cross terms will give us two times i. And then in the denominator, we're gonna have one plus one, which is two. So let's see, in the end, these twos cancel and we get the log of i. But now let's go ahead and write the, the i in its polar form. So now we're gonna have the log of e to the i pi over two. But now taking the log of that, we're gonna have one over two times i times i times pi over two but when everything is combined, we get pi over four, which is the sum of this well-known series. And that's a good place to stop.